For brethren, ye became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. You have suffered like things of your own countrymen. They suffered of the Jews in Judea. And they were, it's a persecution pattern. It happened to them. It'll happen to you. So when it happened to you, don't be surprised. I see that it's already happened to you as well. He was there. It didn't it took three weeks for him to get persecuted. Verse 15. But both who both, now he's speaking of the Jews, of the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. Did you guys know that right now in our house, what is it, House Bill 5090 or I forget it off the top of my head. I spoke about it in a sermon a little while back. There is a bill to make it illegal to read this verse that says that the Jews killed Jesus. I'm talking about in America. I'm not talking about in Germany. I'm not talking about in Israel. I'm not talking about in Canada, where they've already outlawed portions of the Bible. Israel, they can lock you up for two years if you preach the gospel to an 18-year-old. If you preach Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the Christ, to a kid under 18, they can lock you up for two years. But now in America, and I think it's House Bill... Is it 50, 90? It's something like that. It's a sequence. And I, I preached about it previously. It's illegal to say that the Jews killed Jesus. But the Bible says it half a dozen times. They want to make the Bible hate speech. We don't hate the Jews. They need to be saved. We don't hate the Muslims, another false religion. They need Jesus as Christ as well. It's important to discern this. But notice what's being said here. Of the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, a history of killing the people that warned them, and have persecuted us, the Christians, and they please not God and are contrary to all men. That's bizarre. They are, the Jews are contrary to all men. The Jews please not God. God looks down and he says, I am not happy with them. They are not my people. They've killed my prophets. They've killed my son. They're killing my people. I'm not happy with them. But he also says they're contrary to all men. Even to the Romans, they didn't like them. Their religion had become dishonest. Contrary to all men. Boy, what does contrary mean? The opposite. Somebody said it. The opposite. Here's a dictionary definition. Perversely inclined. That's what the dictionary says. That's contrary. The Jews are perversely inclined away from God. They're intentionally disrupting others. That's what it means. They're contrary to all men. They're aggravating other people. And somehow Christians think we need to go and start World War III for Christ rejecting Judaism. It blows my mind. The Bible tells us the Antichrist, another Messiah, will stand in Jerusalem and say, I am the Christ, the son of David. And he will come in his own name and the world will receive him. We know the Bible says that and yet Christians are like, we got to help him. If we don't help him, we're going to be cursed. Isn't that what happens? Don't people teach like that? We've been deceived into thinking that we need to build the Antichrist temple for them. Galatians 1, Paul said in the, when he was in the Jews' religion, how beyond measure I persecuted the church. He said he was more exceedingly zealous. Paul said, I was killing Christians because they said they had the Christ. You can't say you have the Christ. We rejected him as Christ. Well, God put a stop to that. And it's hard because people say, well, they're God's chosen people, aren't they? Aren't they the ones that came out of Egypt? Those are God's people. The people that exist today are not God's chosen people because they have not chosen God. It's never been about a bloodline for salvation. It's never been about a vicinity or a zip code for salvation. In fact, Romans 9, he says, they're not all Israel, which are of Israel. They're not Israel. What, what does he say? He explains it. He says, that is they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God. Romans 9 makes it very clear. The people living in Israel, these are not the children of God. Because you have a bloodline, which they don't, it's polluted. No one's a pure blood anything. And this is where people get mixed up. Well, the Jewish blood, it's not Jewish blood. There was Judah, there was Benjamin, there was Levi, there was Issachar, there was Manasseh, there was Simeon. You follow? There were 12 different brothers. They all had their own bloodline. And it wasn't about the blood. It was about faith. 
And if you had faith in the coming Messiah, you were elect. Romans 11, he says, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it. At that time, they were saying in Rome, like, look, the Israelites in Judea, they missed the boat. They're not saved. But the Gentiles that believed on Christ, they're elect. They're God's people. Look at verse 15 again. Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us. And they please not God and are contrary to all men. The Jews killed Christ. They killed Jesus Christ. And they're searching for a new Christ today. It says they can't please God. They're contrary. They're hostile. And I don't understand why many Christians want to support the wars of the synagogue of Satan. It blows my mind. There's a, another church nearby. That I was talking with somebody and they go there and their church is doing a horror house. And their pastor says that, well, we have to protect them. And they're going to build the temple. And then the Muslims will come in and claim to be Christ. That's what it means. You know, the Jews, those that practice the Jewish religion, it's a religion. They are looking for a Messiah, any Messiah but Jesus. Somebody will say, I'm the son of David. I'm the son of Abraham. I'm your king. And then he'll go into the temple and say, and I'm Jehovah. I'm God. That's exactly what he's going to do. But most people don't understand the scriptures because, well, we have to help them build that temple. Literally, somebody nearby, a preacher is preaching this. We have to help them. They're going to build the temple. That's what it says. And we have to protect them. Or we're going to be cursed of God. It's the Antichrist temple. I don't understand how anybody could say that. He says in verse 16, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. They're trying to prevent others from being saved. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins all the way, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Now Christians, the Bible says, we are not appointed unto wrath. That's three chapters from here. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 9. We're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. We are not appointed unto God's wrath. God will not pour out His wrath on His children. We are not appointed to that time period, the second half of the seven years called the wrath. But the modern nation, or the modern nation of Israel, as it's so called, religious Judaism, really is under God's curse today because they've cursed Jesus. We are not appointed to wrath, but this says that they are. In 2 Chronicles 19, he says, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Why would we help somebody that hates Jesus Christ? Hey, we're going to go out and preach the gospel to everybody. Everybody. Every chance we get, we're going to take it. Even if we, well, they're contrary. I'm going to try anyway. I'm just going to try God may use it as a witness against them in eternity or he may actually use it to change their heart. And we don't know. America, I really believe that America has been under a curse for helping the ungodly nation of Israel. For helping Zionism. Zionism created in 1897. Almost at the year 1900. 1896, a letter was written. The Zionist Congress was created. It was a political movement fueled and funded by bankers, lawyers, Freemasons. And I really believe that America has been under a curse ever since we've taken part of it. It didn't take long. We had the Great Depression that was caused by the Federal Reserve, which were bankers that practiced that religion, the stock market collapse was a result of that. Money has been debased. I don't have one on me. I, I used to carry a silver dollar. I have a silver dollar from 1923, 1924. And I, I gave the example how we've lost, we've, uh, it's depleted by like 99%. What you could have bought with a silver dollar back then, if you went to buy all of that as good, like the top, top of the shelf, best eggs, organic eggs, you know, free range, raw milk, A2, A2, right? Pound of grass-fed organic steak, like a gallon of gasoline. 
unleaded, leaded, I don't know. But I gave an example and charted it out. Basically, we have lost our purchasing power. Our $100 bill is, you know, worth $100 a dollar now. Basically, that $1 has, you know, we've just lost so much of our purchasing power ever since we've embraced Zionism as a nation. Our country has been under a curse. We're literally under a curse. Our financial market has collapsed. We are overinflated. I don't even know the number. Trillions and trillions of dollars in debt, and it's going to pop, and we're all going to be broke, and we're going to be saying, where's the money? I don't understand why we're broke. We're still working, and we still have stuff. I'll tell you why. It's because of bankers that practice Judaism that says it's okay to steal from the cattle. They call you goyim, which means you have no soul. That's not the Judaism of the Bible, mind you. This is what the Pharisees made up and codified as the Babylonian Talmud. Zionism invented right before the 1900s in America, shall you love uh, the ungodly, love them that hate the Lord? Shall you help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from God. I believe America's under a curse for helping Zionism because it is a curse. It is magic. It's witchcraft. The Federal Reserve was created. The Rothschilds. Who knows who the Rothschilds are? They don't have the blood of Jacob. Let me just say that. But they have the religion of Pharisaical Judaism. The Rothschilds are the reason that we had the collapse. They're the reason the stock market collapsed. They're the reason for the Great Depression. No prayer in school anymore. That happened right after we went to war for Israel and gave them weapons. And even in 1967, the USS Liberty, an American vessel, was attacked by the nation of Israel. And American troops saw their eyes and said, why, why, are, you, why are you shooting us? Stop shooting us. And they're radioing, we're here to help you in the Gulf. And they were attacking Americans. We are under a curse. There's no prayer in school. You know, the whole prayer in school thing was led by a guy that was used to be in the KKK. The KKK was started by Freemasonry. Freemasonry and Judaism, Talmudic Judaism, it goes hand in hand. It's not the same as biblical Judaism. This is, it has nothing to do with the old covenant. It's Kabbalicism. It is esoteric witchcraft. The curse of abortion on America didn't take long. Why? Because we have a bunch of lawyers and bankers that serve another God. They hate the Lord Jesus Christ. And America says, well, we have to help them. We have to love them. If we just keep doing that, we'll be blessed. And God keeps cursing our nation, and he's going, to, he's going to punish us if we keep helping those that hate the Lord. Now, today, the average... I mean, abortion is such a depopulation agenda. They've been very successful at killing innocent babies, haven't they? The average American, not only are they not saved, that's the big issue, right? But they don't own a Bible, they don't have retirement. They come from a broken family. They have some form of an addiction, video games or a substance. You go to public school, they're going to put your kids on drugs. The average person today, the average young person growing up, they're under a curse, and it's the fruit of us blessing Zionism. And I hate to say it, but listen, it doesn't matter what race or religion you are. If you reject Jesus as Christ, you're going to hell and you're not God's people. And it has to be said that Christianity has to stop blessing Zionism. It is anti-Christ. Zionism is one thing. Build the temple for the Christ. Build the, that's their prayer. Build the temple next year. Build the temple or Christ will come. That's their whole prayer. And America's funding it. In 1 Peter 2 he says... Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. This is written to Christians. And holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into marvelous light. Listen to this. Which in time past were not a people. This isn't written to Judaism. It's written to the Gentiles. We're no more Gentiles because we're in Christ. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. They are not God's people. God's people are those that were not a people. They're people by faith. We're saved by faith. 